the big thing for Secret here is they have the Earthshaker. So he can Fissure Block right away, pull the lane back a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be a great lane if it is Zai in the off lane. Uh, I mean, there's a, there, another possibility, I guess, is the Brew going off lane. And S4 has already picked yeah. up a, a Reign of Protection here. So I wonder if maybe we even see like the Queen of Pain safe lane solo versus the Batrider expecting that 1v1 Arteezy mid and, and they go aggro try. That, that could be a possibility. I, I would kind of lead towards a dual or a tri lane in the off lane just because uh, I'm cheating and I see S4 as the Reign of Protection, but <laughs> I suppose anything's <laughs> possible here. It could also so be the Queen of Pain off and just a, a defensive tri lane as well. And well, it seems he everyone's heading bottom, so I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Now they both have rated protection, right. so now I have no idea. <laughs> yes, there, there goes your, yeah, your theories out the window. Right, so Secret versus Alliance. Game one between these two sides. My name's Odie Pixel. I'm joined here by LD Dota himself. And as we can see so far on the side of Alliance, we're going to have Ake on the IO Magica on that support like a Magic Pika is going to be running with Lina Niqua on the Batrider and Loder himself on the Chaos Knight and well LD what's going on on this side of the Radiant? Uh, on the Radiant side we've got Puppy on the Shaker starts off with the Wards Boots first Rubik for Kuroki looking to make some early plays S4 will be handling your Brewmaster Zai or whatever the hell. I, are you, do you ever want to try to say this name? Are you feeling brave today, OD? Because oh, I'm God. sure not. But whatever so, that is on the Queen of Pain. And, and we got Arteezy on the Shadow Feed. Okay, a little bit of a potential fight here around this bottom room. Both teams. Send a lot down. Loader, in fact, bringing S4 in for a quick slap. But then he's just back up to the high ground with the raise. The Fisher blocking them up already. Loader, he's kind of on his own. But is the damage there from Secret? And it doesn't look like it is. Okay, they're holding on to him dearly. There's your light strike Ray. Can Alliance turn this around? Arteezy getting fairly low. Loader wants to chase this one down. He is going to have another reality rift in about five seconds. But the raise is bringing low. Arteezy trying to man up. But Arteezy is actually a man down. Nikwa drawing first. They're not done yet. The they're going to club yeah, Puppy. They're coming. running in. They don't have Ignite anymore, but they do have the Tether move speed, and Puppy has no boots. He's already spent his gold. He's almost expecting to die for this one more club. Can they get the job done? No. They get fogged. Nice jukes by Puppy, though. He's got to walk back to Fountain, so, I mean, I wouldn't say it's better to die, but it's about the same thing in terms of how long he's out of the game. <laughs> that was crazy. Both teams could have backed, but Pika was just standing there like, no, we're taking this fight. Throws out the stun. And the Shadow Fiend was trying to right-click him the whole time, but Arteezy went for raises, so at that point, you know, it's it's just it's a level one Shadow Fiend. He, doesn't, he hits like a kitten, and he'd already used his raises, so why not? And it just ends up working out really well. That was a surprisingly good fight for Lions. They're up against the Shaker at level one. It looked like Puppy had opportunity to just fissure block one hero off, but... Uh, ended up that oh, I just had these tanky frontliners, the Chaos Knight as well as the Ogre, and you know once the Chaos Knight got low, he started running away, and then Loda came back in a little bit later on in the fight, and they seemed like it seemed like Secret went for the bait, They're like okay, we can get this Chaos Knight, but he's beefy, man, stout shield, four armor, 600 HP at level one, and yeah, you know, then the Ogre started taking the punishment in the front lines, and well, uh, great start here for Alliance getting that first blood. Indeed, and I think it's really worth pointing on there what you were mentioning about the fact of the Chaos Knight being tanky. You've also got this Ogre in this lane, and they're going to be backed up by Ake, who has, of course, now got the bottle on Io. So this is going to be a very, very tanky, aggressive tri lane. It is. At the same time, it's kind of hard to find kills here if the Fissure is used defensively, but uh, it may they may be able to, especially if Seeker go to pull. For now, it's Wyatt's pulling Puppy, and they get the two-second stun. He's not taking Tower Aggro right now, though. So it looks like he may be okay. Clap coming out on two. They're still diving Puppy, committing heavily for this one. They may turn back to S4, though. That brew. One second stun. More right clicks. There's your stick. I don't know if it's enough to tether. They get the kill. Oh, man. Alliance going ham in the tri lane. And it's absolutely working out. Chaos Knight, one of the other weaknesses of him, of course, being that his intelligence gain and his mana pull in turn aren't great. And the fact he's got this Io backing him up allows him to be really aggressive. I would have liked to get that room, but Puppy is going to take it from poor old Ake. So Ake might even think about heading back to base uh, to get that bottle recharged. And uh, looking elsewhere on the map, mid lane, Lina versus SF. Fairly even at the moment. Pycat with a slight advantage. Pycat getting very low here. Arteezy hasn't got another raise for a few seconds, so Pycat's going to be all right this time. Top lane, this Queen of Pain solo off lane dealing up against this bat. And Quap doing fairly well. 13 CS against the bat, 6, so it's, it's a pretty good lane for Zyapir. 
Yeah, and the Batrider got the first blood, so it's, uh, it's a tough lane by default. He already has the boots. Uh, we'll see if he wants to go straight into Tranquils or maybe picks up a bottle along the way. Uh, the other thing mid lane, Arteezy had a regen rune, so that makes a big difference here against a, a hero like Lina. Someone who can normally harass you out of lane and even threaten to kill you early if you get out of position. But with the regen rune, he, he could afford to play a little more greedy as soon as the... Uh, basically, as soon as that... Uh, that Dragon Slave comes out, that's when you look to use your bottle charges. So he tanked the Dragon Slave, then he immediately costs the regen, and now Arteezy is in pretty good shape. Lina, known for being a lane dominator, definitely a hero that can shadow feed problems early on, and also a hero that can just easily kill him once once the Lina hits six. But bottom lane, looks like we got more action. They've caught out S4, or maybe S4's caught out them. Yeah, nice Fisher from Puppy there, turning that one around. It's going to be in the S4 getting very low. Loda trying to rip him back towards him. Loda's going to have to back out of this one. Magic is left in the thick of it, but Puppy and Kuroki haven't got anything to throw down on him. So even though they go aggressive, they've got to be careful with Ake's positioning because, well, the side of secret, they can blow that wisp up pretty quickly. Very squishy. It is... It is probably the main weakness of the wisp in the, in the early stages of the game. Before you... If you're not getting runes... And if you're not getting your levels, uh, the hero uh, naturally very easy to burst down. Zero base armor, pretty low HP pool, and yeah, just just caught on the wrong side of the fissure that time around. But still, I think the lane is going okay for Alliance so far. You look at their overall game plan. And, you know, thanks to Nico getting the first blood, he's already got a bottle picked up. If he's just able to get a pl quick blink dagger, Pykek gets level six, which he has now. There's a lot of kill potential. The Bat Rider can basically rotate bottom and, and win them the lane. So. Uh, I'm keeping my eyes on mid though. Pycat, all it takes is like a Dragon Slave and a Laguna, and Arteezy will die. He is currently waiting for his bottle, and you can see Pycat's like, "Hey, go, go ahead and creep, man. I dare you." But he's not gonna, he's not gonna take that risk. Yeah, Arteezy's got to be very, very careful now in this position. It's gonna be hard for him to clear the waves with this. Lina watching him very carefully with the Laguna Blade. This ping's coming out in the jungle. There's no stacks actually being created yet for the Shadow Fiend on the side of the Radiant. Oh, There's actually a rotation Arteezy. as well. Look at this Look at the easy, yeah. They've, <laughs> they want him. <laughs> they want his head. Loader and Ake rotating in. They want to try and cut round behind him as well. Magica on the high ground, zoning back the Earthshaker. Now Arteezy's a little bit too far in. Can they capitalize on this Loader? There's the bolt, and he's going to get a nice long stun with that one. There's going to be Magica as well, trying to stun him up in the rift, bringing him over the Fisher. And that's one thing you got to think about. Chaos Knight works pretty well against an Earthshaker because Fisher, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, that reality rift Radiant's works pretty well. Man, you know, the crazy part is both teams, like, knew exactly what was happening. Obviously, Alliance yes. know they're ganky man. And <laughs> there's a ward here, bottom, for secret. And they saw it. They had the Earthshaker mid specifically to defend against that type of movement. But I think Mad coming from the from the north surprised them a little bit. They do not have a rune ward at the top rune. And, uh, really no vision there at all. As our rune is going to spawn, it's a, a haste bottled up for Ake. And they may look to dive Kuro here, bottom. Oh, they got him. It's going to be a Telekinesis, he's going to get the stun onto Aya, but yeah, Magica with that speed, chasing him down. S4's coming in with a clap with the slow, it's not quite enough, Aya finds that, and maybe S4 goes down as well, Luda thinking about going in. Uh, now mid lane, Pycat going in for the solo kill, and Arteezy doesn't have the mana for the ultimate, but he's got it now! Is it good enough turn for the Laguna? No, he can't get in range. Oh, he thought he had that solo kill. Arteezy even got caught by the Light Strike Ray. It's not an easy spell to just hit without a setup spell, but... Not able to get a range for that Laguna. That was a close call. It was very close indeed, Pycat. Not going to be too happy, but at the same time, doesn't Dyer's mean he's still got it, so Arteezy's still going to be very careful about coming into the lane. And Arteezy, yeah, he's going to head back and stack some of these camps up now, coming up to the seven minute mark, and look to find a bit of safer farm there. And talking about farm, talking about this aggressive trialing, Chaos Knight at the moment, 30 CS up against the 27 of S4. And it, S4 actually was doing a lot worse earlier, but he's managed to catch up. Needs to be careful. Loda actually having a little bit of a switch round through the trees there. There's going to be the bolt onto Kuroki, trying to get the hits in. Ake getting fairly low to S4 and Puppy, I think the Chaos Knight is going to lose his Wisp. And CK has to get out of that one. And uh, again, well, Alliance, they try and go a little bit aggressive with the IO and the Chaos Knight, but IO just getting caught out. Uh, that, was, that was pretty greedy. They, they do not have their Ogre there. They, they don't have Vision either on, on Secrets. So they have no idea where these supports are. But 
But yeah, I think they wanted to back. Oh, Arteezy, that's a four second stun, but oh, they need the plus one to come in a little bit sooner. They can't get it now. Mad pull back into tower. I can also come in and straight Lagoons in the face. That was basically a full HP Rubik and felt like but not any longer. Now the Quap! Zai, what a play. He wipes all three with the ultimate combo. They do end up getting Arteezy in the end. It's a three for two. It's not that bad yet, but now they hunt down Loda. They want to catch him out. Zai, excellent rotation of this Queen of Pain. Looking for a bit more. Blink forward. He's going to snipe that. Bounty rune, and now they continue to chase on the load. It gets the two seconds done, but back up inbound. They slow him down with the Shadow Strike, and it looks like one more slap. Can they get it? He's fast. He's got the high base move speed, but oh, I think he may take down to this final Shadow Strike. No, he's got the stick charges. He may have to flip it. One more blink in from Zai. Big commitment there. Oh, man. They're not done yet. They want to fight more. Yeah. He can find more if Brew finds the clap. He hasn't quite got the mana for 10 mana short at the moment. Back getting tethered up. I don't know if Nico and uh, the Eye can do anything here against these two. Brewmaster now level six has got the primal split. Gonna be able to bottle himself up an Invis rune as well. But eight for six, and as you said, bang on rotation there from Zai, really bringing him into the game. Four kills now, and 1500 gold suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, just appearing in the Queen of Pain's pocket. Man, what a slugfest. It started, it's eight to six at nine minutes. We have almost almost two kills per minute. The dream is real so far, but they're gonna make their rotation now. Uh, they wanna catch up on levels here. Get the Wisp level six. The, the tri-lane achieved what it wanted to, which was to try and slow down the Brewmaster a bit. Unfortunately, uh, with that, those three kills going the way of Secret, it wasn't quite as much of a success as they would like, but now mid lane, S4, there's your split on the pike end. Oh, beautiful timing there. Arteezy was there to back him up, and the split coming through before the light strike lands down on the brew. Nine to six, and well, with he's this Arteezy. With this wind pan, he's gonna find the bat right there. Oh, yeah. Man, nice bit of my just, just annoying the bat. It's, uh, it's a bit. His eyes coming in as well. Hasn't got the ultimate of 20 seconds, so not enough burst to deal with the bat. But it's gonna create space in secret. They're gonna be able to take the tier one in the mid lane. Man, if that, if that Cyclone actually set up a kill, that would have been one of the sickest plays ever for Brewmaster. It's like, okay, he splits mid, he gets a kill, whatever. But that, that next level going for the second kill. Uh, unfortunately, Queen of Pain was a bit too far away. So I used his blink immediately to try and get in range for his ultimate scream combo, but just couldn't close the gap. And now, OD, they do have their blink dagger on the Batrider, as well as Laguna online. This could be an opportunity here bottom lane for Lions to go and get something done. Certainly looking for it, and who's in the lane at the moment? It's Kuro, Kuro's out the most, and they're going to go straight for the Rubik. They want the easy kill. They might not even need to use the Laguna Blade here. Telekinesis does get cast onto the Lina. But and now mid lane, Zai is hunting this Ogre. He's a beefcake, though. Not an easy kill. Gets the stun up, but backup's coming in. and um, I don't know if Zai wants to commit too much for this. There's your slow. He's already he's got the break on cooldown. And he's going to turn. There's your Quapo. Gets the frag. And... <laughs> Oh, a little bit too slow to rotate. Alliance don't have their tier one anymore, and they couldn't get the, the back up there in time. Tower is under attack. Again, this Zai Quap doing absolute wonders for the side of Secret. And he's going to come up top and, and try and force Loader back because there's going to be a TP in as well from Rubik. If this slow is there, which it is, they could try and catch Loader out here. Loader, he's all alone. There's no Radiant's one to back him up. He's trying to fight up against the Rubik, but it's not enough damage and he will go down. Rubik, Kuroki taking that kill. And now here's the rotation from Alliance, but blinking from S4 is revealed. He's got it online. That's Yelena going down. Machka throwing everything he can onto the Queen of Pain. And well, Zai might think to chase this, and he certainly will. Blinks up to the up the lane, and Magic is going to take a dagger. This is getting out of control, man. From S4. This is Ogre going down. Hey, this is three heroes down on the side of Alliance, and from a game that was, I think, we we're eight to six a minute ago, suddenly to thirteen to seven. Dyer's Secret just running attack. across the map and causing a lot of problems for Alliance. The offlane cop. Uh, the lane top was okay for the Bat Rider. He he went off to the jungle. He was farming his stacks. I think Zai was out CS him, but it wasn't, you know, it's not a big deal. Your Dyer's Batrider gets his blink and starts to have a huge attack. impact, but it's just that one fight mid where Zai shows up, gets the three kills, and ever since then, it feels like Secret have just had that plus one, and if anyone should have a plus one, it should be Alliance with the Wisp, but unfortunately, Ake's still not level six. 12 minutes in, he, he really needs to get this so they can start trying to ambush some heroes. They're going to find a pick Dyer's bottom on Puppy. He gets caught by the lasso, loaded to follow this up, and a easy kill with a three-second stun. They, they definitely need more of that. Again, the, the key thing, kind of the linchpin at this point is 
Get Ake level 6 and start finding those kills around the map because your Lina is not farming particularly well. The Yule Scepter still a ways off for Pycad and, you know, ultimately Chaos Knight doesn't have a power in this game. No Magnus on his side and he's not a tiny. He doesn't flash farm. He, they really need, once they get the relocate, to start racking up kills around the map. Indeed they do. And Magica, looking at the builder, it's interesting he hasn't put any points in Bloodlust yet, because that is going to really assist Loader in getting those crits through. But at the same time, well, Loader on this Chaos Knight build, not putting any points into the Chaos Strike yet, just maxing out the Bolt and the Rift, which has certainly been working out for him getting the kills, and obviously just the fact that the crit is going to be more relevant in the late game. Maybe as the game gets later, and if we do get to later portions, we'll start to see the power of the Chaos Knight being backed up by the Bloodlust and the IO as well. But they're going to need to get there, and Secret, they're certainly doing their best to shut down the game as quick as they can. 13 to 8, if we're looking at the XP in gold, it's coming up to a 5k lead in XP and a 5k lead in gold as well. So Secret, definitely in a very comfortable position. Yeah, you know, if it goes late, it's, it's kind of a tough game for Alliance. Even though they have the Chaos Knight, the problem is that he's an illusion-based carry, so he's not a great MKB carrier, and you're up against a Brewmaster. Uh, that's where I think you pretty much have to get your BKB, but still, he's got Evasion, you've got Drunken Haze to worry about at some point, perhaps Arteezy is going to build a Butterfly, and... Uh, I think as the game goes later, Dyer's it'll be tough for Alliance just to attack. try it. If they had the farm, like if you give this Chaos Knight six slots, I think he's one of the scariest late game. Oh, Kurogi caught out at the bottom rune. He gets lassoed oh, by Nico. Very nice light striker ray that he stole to hold Pycat back, and now the Orchid from Zai. Zai is going to find that kill. Nico, he can't clean up Kuroki. Kuroki, he's managed to get out. Nico will TP away, and Puppy can't quite find. Uh, yeah, the that, range I, I, I don't know if, if we had a chance to talk about it, but that is a... I think that was a sub-14 minute offlane quaff orchid. Now, to be fair, Zai was technically 1v1, so it's not really like the traditional offlane, but that is, that is a very fast orchid. And on the back of it, I mean, what do you really do if you're alive? They have no one even close to a BKB, a Yule Scepter, a Manta style, a Diffusal Blade. There's just nothing to deal with the silence, and Wisp, Wisp is just food at this point for that Queen of Pain. And Oh, bottom lane. We're going to have our big clash. First relocate of the game, but it's into a three-hero fissure clash. They might all just drop here. Requiem gets a lead in from the fight practically now. They're diving on the pike with their Bruce split. Another blink forward. Secret just cracking the lines of these fights. Zai, they go down though. That's a big streak to end, but unfortunately, it's Mad who gets the kill. Your Ogre getting it. Not really ideal. Though they'll take it. They try to turn it around here. Luna doing good damage. It ends up being a four for three at the end. And they end the big kill streak of the Queen of Pain. Oh, that turns out pretty well at the end for Alliance, all things considered. It certainly does. They did have to buy back on the Aya, but it was just the Aya buying back, so an absolute uh, worthy purchase. And yeah, four heroes down on the side of Secret and shutting down Zai. That is going to be a, a nice gold swing and a bit going towards Alliance, and that was definitely the fight that they needed after what was pretty kind of a rough and rocky early game for them. Well, OD, do you, do you believe in the comeback here? Are you, you feeling it for Alliance? I've or? been, yeah, I've been, they can. I mean, it's, you know, I am hitting level six now with the relocates. If they can find some pickoffs and they can get loaded, those big items online, he did go for the Midas. He's got a lot of money on top of it. And in fact, he's just brought something. What was it? It's, uh, oh yeah, he's getting his uh, armlet finished as soon as possible. Actually building the, uh, picking up the recipe as the first item, kind of. I don't know what's up with that. LD, can you, can you shine some light on that for me? Uh, as far as the Midas goes, you're saying? Uh, no, but no, the um, loader. He's just picked up the recipe for the armlet, but he doesn't have any of the of the other components for it. Oh, so he got the early gloves of haste, uh, and I think he was planning on building the armlet, and then seeing how the ah, game's okay, going, so, Lotus okay. thinking, yeah, we're, okay. we're playing from behind now. We're not going to be able to snowball this, and so I need to go back for Midas. I actually think it's a really underrated item on Chaos Knight. Uh, the farming deficiencies of the hero are one thing. Obviously, as I mentioned, the one exception is if he has an empower on bottom lane. Nico will maybe set you up here, but wow, armlet suddenly complete. There's your recipe, and he's got the Dyer's money to buy it from the side shop. Fortified. All of a sudden, this Chaos Knight Dyer's gets pretty far, but tower. he is a very level dependent here. You really want to get the crit maxed out, as he pointed out earlier. He didn't even have a point in it up until now, uh, which I think Dyer's is a, a fine choice in Chaos Knight. I don't think the crit does too much early, but 
Uh, so you head into the mid in the late game. You really needed to get those quick burst kills, but you know, once Phantasm getting maxed is a big deal. That's where the hero really starts to be a threat, especially if you get the plus one illusions on top of it. Then you've got a, a nice large army of, of knights running around. So uh, I think I think given the, that one fight bottom, uh, all of a sudden it, I'm with you, man. It feels like Bloodlust and Chaos Knight. Uh, BKB no longer removes this either. It doesn't get purged, so uh, it could be a it could be a potent tool to have. The Cast Knight Ogre tool, as well as that Wisp at their side, it's, it's a Superman Cast Knight potentially, but uh, the Wisp is very squishy and it may not end up living much in this game. Structures are fortified. Unless they're going to make their move towards mid. Yeah, Loader actually using the Phantasm to push down the tier two. And it does manage to force out the fortification. Yeah, just said mid lane. The fight could potentially kick off Kuroki. He has stolen the other fire flight. He gets himself out there. And Light's not ready to dive that far. Go too aggressive. There's going to be a TP into mid from the brew. Has got the primal split. Alliance. They're not hanging around anytime soon, though. We see Magic yeah. backing straight on Pycat getting out there as well. They really need this heal for Pycat. But, you know, by the time he gets it. There may be a BKB on Arteezy. He's already up to 2,000 gold with an Ogre Club. Uh, S4, no BKB coming for him. He goes for Vlad's. But your Queen of Pain also has an Ogre Club and 1,200 gold. And that's where my Yule starts to fall off a lot. You can still use the Yule's Light Strike Ray to get kills on supports, but Earthshaker tends to sit back. Kuroki has a stolen Firefly right now, so he may be able to juke and jive as they will smoke. Here we go. Straight into Pycat Telekinesis into the crit. Coming out from S4, that's a very, very dead pie cap. Secret consistently finding these rotations, finding these pickoffs, and putting Alliance really on the back foot. Even though Alliance, they did have their, their fair share of unfavorable fights for the side, they've still got a long way to go in terms of regain control. Loader trying to find as much space as he can on the top lane, trying to avoid the fights and looking for the farm. 1500 gold now on top of Midas and the arm. He's got 8.7k net worth, not that far behind Zai, the lead farmer on Secret, but well, Secret are going to make that game a bit bigger as they do find Roshan, RTZ picks himself up the Aegis, and Loda, he's going to back up for the time being, well aware that Secret might look to rotate straight onto his lane. Well, there's the Yule, so this is probably the most important item for Alliance right now, but uh, BKB about to come out for RTZ, another smoke gank for Secret. There. Uh, I do want to point out that Puppy is now Arteezy's ring bearer. He's strutting around with his rate of Aquila. And uh, very, very thoughtful support play from him, keeping our tort nice and comfy. He'll give that back to the Sages is lost as Nikwa makes his go top, finds the last one, Kuro. They make it a quick takedown here on the Rubik. They will. But Secret, they're looking for something a little more ambitious, OD. They're backstabbing. They uh, certainly are. They've got all the ults online. Can they catch him out here? There's the blink. Cloud. Oh, oh, he's preparing himself. He's got the oh, Echo Slam. He might not even need it. Nikwa goes down. Loader trying to TP out. There's your Echo Slam. Blows up the IO. Orchid is going to stop Loader in his tracks. He tries to arm it toggle, but you can't arm it toggle the entire team of Secret away. And while well, Secret, three heroes taken down from Alliance. And only losing Kuro in mid lane while Zai blinking in. Pycat is there, as you said, with the completed jewels, but they can't find initiation to catch out the queen of pain and secret again another team fight where alliance it starts off with alliance thinking it's going well they catch out the ruby but they're just not prepared for the fact that secret are there with the wraparound yeah and you know it's kind of an unexpected wraparound to, to, to be fair secret they smoke from like right near the roche pit i mean how often does this gank happen right like that's not a very common <laughs> gank path <laughs> It works out beautifully. Alliance get caught totally out of position, and well, with that, BKB is now complete on RTZ. Your Queen of Pain BKB coming very soon, and you know I gotta say I think the big, biggest disappointment for Alliance so far this game really has to be the Lena pick. It, it's a yeah. one in six Lena. Uh, Pycat in a matchup that I think is maybe slightly Lena favored. The big thing is once she gets level six, it's just been those little things. Like he couldn't get in range for the Laguna Blade earlier. He's gotten ganked a couple of times. It seems like he's just kind of unfortunately at the wrong place at the wrong time gets caught out. And now that he has his Yules, normally the the killing item for Lena where she really starts to snowball. There, all the cores are starting to have their counters to it. Two out of three and S4, the third man to get it as Ogre Club picked up. 19 gold in the bank so we're gonna see triple bkb at which point you know lena really needs the eggs but she's just she's nowhere near it indeed not a very very long way away and i'm um, starting to feel that this game a lot attack. is going to rest on loader for the side of alliance he's going to have to do some big big cleaning up in these team fights 
but uh, it's going to be hard to do so with the amount of farm that Secrets Heroes have gotten. There's a really relocate, low. actually. Yeah, just to push the t down this tier two. He has got the Phantasm if he wishes to pop it. We saw him do it on the top lane. But they're just going to go for this tier two. Secret, they're knocking on the doors on the top lane, though. Hitting away the tier three TP back from Batrider. There's uh, the return relocate. Loader and Ake are here. Fortification comes out. TP in from Ogre. Can Nikwa find an, is an initiation with the Lasso? There's going to be a Fisher coming out. RTZ getting bolted up. Masco with a follow up stun. He gets a three times multi cast. Very nice indeed. We get from Ryu. but he gets used up. Nikwa and Lina low. Lina will go down, and so does the bat. Buy back straight away from Pycap. Wants to get himself back into this fight. And Secret. Are they going to go for more? Are they content with just the buyback? It looks like they want more. They're hanging around. They're ready to go back in. Puppy, of course, has got the Echo Slam up back off cooldown. Level 11 as well. It's going to do a lot of damage if it catches them all in the near vicinity. There's no lasso. There's no lasso. Batrider not even bothering to buy back. Why not go for it? You still have agents, you still have your Bruce, but I mean, really, Secret used hardly anything there. Alliance are the ones who committed and didn't get much out of it. Now, the siege continues, our tour, mech gonna cool down soon, and the front lines here is S4. Will get caught, can he get off that split? He really needs to know the Golden God Loda brings him down. Now, the chase on Arteezy. He's gonna get pulled back in. He just quickly dealt with. They do have an Echo Slam soon. Fisher not for three seconds. They make it RTZ. No BKB. And let's see if they chase. Sneakwa in the front lines. He takes the Echo. He's driving them all back. Your Requiem used. But everyone nicely spreads on the side of Alliance. Damage is reduced for now. But it's gonna end soon. Perhaps they lose RTZ twice. They will. It's three down. They're not even done yet. Kuroki with the stolen sticky napalm trying to slow the chase. They don't. They do have a relocate actually. Maybe you want to try to use that to hunt down a fleeing hero. Uh, they may even go here on Karoki momentarily if he sticks around a bit too much longer. Well, they certainly noticed the Rubik in the mid lane and a relocate could could work out. They know it's potentially going to be an easy kill. There's no Brew, there's no Earthshake, and there's no Artur on the old Shadow Fiend. But uh, that was the fight they needed and the fight they was talking about. Loader getting himself in there, helping to find the pickoffs. And Alliance, they're holding on. They're holding on indeed. An XP lead that was 10k down to 8k. And gold-wise, it's starting to turn around as well. So even though Alliance are fairly behind at this 24-minute point, they're certainly not out of it yet. I think the load of BKB caught them a little bit off guard there. That seemed like that was the big item that four secret back. Loda's just in the front lines and... They have a lot of ways to deal with the illusions, but at this stage of the game, they don't really have many solutions for the actual, the main hero. The BKBs are great defensively. Uh, they don't have a ton of burst damage here to deal with. They have the Queen of Pain pure damage ultimate. The right click is lacking. Arteezy has gone for a very uh, just defensive utility style build here, picking up the mech BKB. Later on in the game, they should have some solutions for just the main CK. Also, obviously the BKB will lose some of its duration, but for now, not the case. Oh, they will easy. smoke up. Yes, this is the time for Alliance to try and smoke, and they are going to find the Blink and the Lasso. Can they hold on to easy and Blitz for long enough? Yes, the crit's coming through. And, well, that was a, a Shadow Fiend blowing up very, very quickly to the damage there of the Chaos Knight. Yeah, that was... he's squishy, man. That's so, oh, surprisingly so. If he gets off the BKB, not so much of a concern. Then he's able to pop his mech. He's going to have some extra armor to work with and, and H, the HP regen, but... For now, not the case. I think for Secret at this point, this is where Alliance get a lot stronger, and ultimately Secret probably want to look more towards finding some pickoffs and farming towards late game. Puppy getting his blink will be very big for them. Arteezy getting that butterfly and really nice choice, I think, against the Chaos Knight. Uh, and then, you know, maybe a, a Manta, just something to kind of confuse them. But for now, they are smoked. This has to be one of Secret's last smokes for a while. They've got one more in the stash, and then that's going to be it for some time, as they will find Mad here. That's a dead ogre. That's a nice little pick off there. Delight with the ogre down for 50 seconds now. And can Secret look for any more? Are they ready to just go again and try and chase Delight at the high ground? And Nikola hiding in the trees. And yeah, Loader TPs himself straight out of there. Pycat, he's ready to go as well. And so is the eye. They're just, they're just going to get themselves out. Oh, well, Pycat's going to stick around for a little bit. Continues to find a little bit more farm in this top lane. And so our Secret, they look to separate up themselves and continue to clear out the jungle camps and just find as much as they can out of the map at this point. So, so PyCat is actually going, not for the Ags, which we often see, especially when Alina's playing from ahead, but he's gonna go BKB. And Radiant's I like this a lot. He's died almost attack. every fight. It feels like very early in those fights as well. And although he won't be as much of a threat to the secret BKBs, they have the Chaos Knight to be their big damage dealer. And if PyCat can just get off an extra stun or two, that could be the difference maker. 
the main thing ideally for him is he gets this BKB, and even though he's getting it, uh, normally you look at BKB as a fighting item, I kind of feel like Pycat is hoping he won't have to fight for a while, and that he can just farm up for the eggs after this, and then get involved. We'll, we'll see if he has that luxury, but for now, Loda looking to set up on S4 bottom lane. He does Reality Rift. The stun comes out. Three seconds. I don't think they can really go for this. Maybe trying to force out a Bruce Blade, but guess who's here? It's Papa Zai. Brains off a low soul burn. Gonna tick him down. Gets the kill. And, well, don't let Loda live. Mercy was had, at least for him. A nice uh, involvement there from the Queen of Pain, but at the same time, as you were saying, I don't think there was any chance they were actually going to kill S4. He did have that Primal Split available in Alliance. Just with the Chaos Knight and the Iron, just not a lot of lockdown. And in all reality, they need Ogre to come in with a nice multi cast, or they do need to find the Lasso um, if they really want to hold S4 in place long enough to stop him from being able to get off that cast animation. 28 minutes in, 27 kills for Secret up against the 17. And well, the graphs, it's been a little bit up and down. Uh, Alliance did manage to close the gap pretty nicely, but we are seeing it to begin to tail off again back in advantage of the side of secret yeah and there is a two tower advantage here for secret so that's something to keep in mind but it, it is one of the issues with the alliance draft is they don't farm exceptionally well oh, oh we're gonna God. find yes. well who's found yes. here there's backup coming oh. bat rider yeah, Batrider actually blinking into the crop hole there. And well, Zai, I think he might try and clear this one up. He's a little bit low on mana, but there's the scream. Chases the bat around the tree line. And Magica, he's looking away, but looking to get away with his life. But yeah, unfortunate timing for the bat there. Blinks in just as the ult was aimed at the ogre and uh, takes the full brunt of the attack. And without the Batrider and without the Lasso, this is a chance for Secret to push and get it here too. Yeah, that really turns out terribly for them. <laughs> you don't send your Batrider in to protect the Ogre. Although, I, this Ogre does have an egg, so he's maybe forming into more of a core role. Uh, or at least uh, a do it, be more of a damage dude than the Batrider, but definitely not ideal, especially using the lasso. Uh, secret, gonna take the tower. It's now a three tower advantage for them. This may help setting up for the next Roshan. And it seems for now Alliance is going to be very restricted. I think the next step for Secret is getting a gem. Don't have one yet. Nothing on the Courier, nothing on the Heroes right now. But at this point, if they can just bottle Alliance up in their base, they don't have a hero like Naga or Tinker. You know, someone who can rat and split push, even a Phantom Lancer. And if they're if they're not getting out on the map, which their their lineup doesn't really excel at when they're playing from behind, they they will fall even farther behind in terms of net worth. It's it's a pretty big deficit, as you were pointing out with the graphs. And if Secret choke them out, play this, asphyxiate them, and play a kind of starvation Dota, they may be able to keep Alliance even buried in the grave for, in the gutter for a long time when it comes to gold. Mm, this could be a big fight here. Secret, they smoked up into their own jungle alliance as well as smoked Necro on the front lines. Ah, uh, smoke gets revealed. RTG pops the BKB straight away. Telekinesis from Kuroki. Perfectly catching out the Bat Rider in that. That is a very, very quick pickoff. And again, Bat tries to start the initiation and lean himself in, but just gets taken down too quickly by the side of Secret. That was brutal. And what do you know? Roche. Oh, very, very unfortunate death there for Alliance. With that kill. They're able to just secure an Aegis for Secret as well. And, well, the last time they see high ground, it ends up working out okay for Alliance, but, you know, this time around, OD, they've got a BKB on everyone as far as the cores go. They really should be able to get off their Bruce Blitz. They have to blink on the Earthshaker as well, something they did not have to sign. And this may be the Aegis that allows Secret to crack this Alliance base wide open. I think if you're Alliance now, you really need to start ratting, split pushing as much as possible, and just stall, baby. Stall. But they're coming right down in. Stalling will not be permitted, apparently. Yeah, they're gonna have to do something spectacular from the high ground here. And I mean, Loader, he has been avoiding the fights recently and just focusing on farming up. He is still 2,000 behind this offlane quap, though. He's found the Reaver on top of the BKB, and he's uh, just spent out a little bit more money. What was that to pick up? Was the recipe for the heart? Yeah, recipe for the heart. And he has got enough for that bit booster, but that will, will put him in a position where he's not going to have buyback available for this next fight, and he might very well need it to Alliance. They're all backed up in the base. They are ready to try and take this fight, but are they as ready as Secret? S4 leading the high ground and then the initiation. Silence goes through. Laguna Blade onto S4, though. He can't get the promise play off, and he is down. Loader has put the BKB, but Secret, they say, well, you can take the brew, but you're not going to take anything else from us, and they just back up out of it. Going high ground against a bat, very difficult. You know, they even have these wards high ground, and they started painting the second that smoke got used. I, 
I think they may have seen it, but unfortunately, just not able to back off in time. S4 maybe underestimating the burst damage alliance to third half, but with Alina, especially if you don't get off your BKB, she's not ever agged yet, so BKB is a solution, but if you don't pop it, then you're still very killable. And now Alliance is going to march down mid with that ultimate for Lota. There's a completed heart. I'll take down the tier 1. I don't think they go tier 2 here. Brew will be respawning in 20, and you have to worry about a potential buyback, but still, a big hole. And with that, we'll, we'll get a nice denied. objective here. Alliance desperately need this gold, and the kill was 1500 gold swing. Or uh, was a 1500 gold swing, I should say. Uh, now with the tower, make it a little over 2500, I'm guessing. And the swing is certainly going to be there. Down the mid lane now. I don't know if it's been noted, but Kuroki, he did decide to opt for that rod of Aoi to try and catch out some of these some of these squishy heroes. And heroes like the Batrider as well, who are going to be blinking in. And of course, they've got the four staff, but haven't got that BKB Not quite yet. Heart's easy leading the charge. Queen of Pain ready to back him up. Queen of Pain working on that Shiva's guard. Has the recipe on top of the Orchid and the Axe and the Plate Mail. And here comes the damage onto the Tier 3s. <laughs> the stolen, the stolen Phantasm. All these little Rubik's hitting the tower. It's pretty cloudy. <laughs> oh, wow. It's actually adorable. As well. He got the bonus 4th one, so... And the RNG's... Lucky Axe. Oh, 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 look at that. The initiation. He has got BKB, but he's of course got the Aegis as well. BKB was caught by Zion, but the buyback from Nico comes in with his suit, trying to hold the Queen of Pain in place, but the Light Strike Rage is a little bit too late. And now here comes the S4 on the Brute, popping the Primal Split, Magica. He does get a stun out into the Fire Spirit, but it's just space being created for Secret, because they're clearing up the middle racks, and there's not a lot that Lions can do. Loader going in now to Arteez, the crit's there, but Aegis is available, and Arteez is going to be back for round two. Loader trying to pick off this. Side of secret arts, easy gets blown up. Puppy coming in with an echo stab is not quite enough to find Loda who is still alive. And there's two heroes down on the side of a secret, maybe even more because of Kuroki getting chased down by Magica. Nikwa, Nikwa getting low. Magica as well, he's trying to bring down the Rubik and he will find it. Magica, is he going to get away with this S4? I don't think he can go back in. No, there's a relocate. Alliance, right, they want more and they're going to find it. It's going to be a full team wipe going the way of Alliance and Secret. They oh do my. Get the range tracks. But it's just the range drag LD 35 minutes in, and they lose five heroes. Okay, so that was a 6,000 gold change, which is bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> wow. But the XP swing is the really scary part. Literally <laughs> over 9,000. <laughs> uh, you took the meme right out of my mouth, man. Oh my god. That is <laughs> that is a massive swing. <laughs> Look at the graph, straight down. Now it's it's actually Alliance leading in terms of experience. Oh god. Jesus. What? One that fight! One swing. fight! Now, it was a team wipe, to be fair, but... And yes. an Aegis down. Great hold there by Alliance. You know, that fight almost went really poorly. Loda did not have mana for Phantasm, and then Ake came in, he tethered him, he used the mech, and Ake was low, so uh, ends up giving Loda the bottle charges as well. He barely gets off the Phantasm. It just came off cooldown at the right time. If that's like five to ten seconds later, I think they maybe lose the melee racks as well. Instead, they only end up losing the range tier mid lane and top lane. Earlier was Siege, but oh, Secret never got an objective out of that, aside from the tier three, so... You know, this is Alliance with a win and a bat rider, and they've only lost the range racks. This team knows how to rat if they need to. They know how to base race. It's not at that point yet, but it just feels like one of those games where it may end up just being a big relocate racks taking that ends up turning it. Oh, correct. Into the bolt, then it's going to be a silence thrown out of the air tonight, but he's got the right clicks, and that's all you need to bring down the Rubik. Mega kill streak now for Loaded. Does he want to go for more? Can he go for more? Nice secret. They are getting back. They are starting to realize that this loader on the Chaos Knight is very, very scary indeed with that heart. And uh, well, now with the ultimate orb, and what's he going to be building with that LT? Do you think we are going to see him go for that full on illusions build and maybe even pick up a Manta style at this point? Uh, I think so. It, Scotty, I suppose, is an okay item just for the raw stats, but here comes your lasso on Zai. You blink and you'll miss it. He's already dead. Oh, these picks they're fighting with the Batrider are just turning the game for Alliance. And, you know, it's one thing to give Alliance their first pick, Wispo D, but uh, I think we're seeing here why most teams just do not want to play against Bat. 
And they were, I mean, by all accounts, Secret were dominating this game early, but all of a sudden, there's no split push. The massive army of knights comes marching down mid. They have their burst, but they don't even want to use it just yet. And to me, MVP of this game, a secret win, has got to be Puppy. He needs a big Echo Slam to turn this way. He certainly does, and he's preparing himself on the left. Keeping that blinking. Throws a fish down. BKB caught by Loader. He wants to find these racks, though, and he certainly will with those Phantasm Illusions. Doing so much damage. Blinking from S4. Gets Jules up straight away by Pika. Can they catch our Loader? There's your Rod of Outer. ATOS bringing him down. BKB provides for Just so we can get it off. RTZ coming in, but no one's actually being blown up on the side of Alliance. Match gets taken a bit of damage now in the sidelines, in the trees. He gets almost done onto Kuro, but he does go down. And it's going to be Arceus. Arceus oh, yeah. to come back, so... They lose two supports, but they get the Queen of Pain kill. They get a melee Rex. Great trade for Alliance. They're, they're happy with that one. And, you know, the other thing is that Secret used the Bruce Split as well as the Requiem. So with that and the Queen of Pain being dead, they're really not in position to push. I, I don't know, man. This is just feeling like one of those games where Ooh. it may turn out to be the the rat and you know alliance having the late game edge for now they're taking head on fights but they have that plan b if it ever gets to a point where secret can outfight them they can relocate and with phantasm ck becomes an excellent pusher especially the manta style as well so uh, if that ends up being the build this is a very unusual item pickup arteezy is going to go not into traditional right click items for your shadow fiend <laughs> but into a refresher orb I, I actually think it's the item. Uh, it, it sounds okay. crazy, right? But yeah. the old, the big issue for them right now is the CK illusion. And there's this is a ranged hero, so you can't get a Battle Fury to deal with them. You don't have a Magnus on your team. If they can kill off the CK illusion, Secret can probably take the fight. Especially with Brewmaster getting into Salt Kuras to go with the Vlads. S4, that's going to come soon. It seems like the, the key here for Arteezy is just getting off your double Requiem as well as the double BKB in the team fights. I don't know, we'll see, but uh, theoretically, it's a better pickup here to deal with, at least with the Chaos Knight, uh, than anything else he could buy. So, um, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this item. We'll have to see what he's able to pull off with it. And indeed, it's one of those items that if he gets the double Requiem off, that would be a a very, very hard team fight for Alliance to win. But at the same time, if it gets cancelled, if it gets whiffed, if he gets himself blown up before he's able to get both of the casts down, it's essentially going to be a hell of a lot of money invested in an item that's not going to offer you anything too much else at this point yeah. in game 14. He is up in. against a Batrider, as well as a Lina with an egg. So it is entirely possible that he uses BKB, channels the Requiem, he gets lassoed, or he just gets crit to death by the Chaos Knight. Like, it's not a guarantee this is a good item, but in theory it is the best one item he can get to deal with illusions, and it seems like that's what that's what Secret are really worried about here, is just getting run over by... I mean, now, now the army gets really massive. You've got... The three guaranteed phantasms, the one bonus one, so that's already five CKs. And then you've got your Mantle Style Illusions, another two. You pop the armlet here, they're closing in on 4,000 HP. Uh, I mean, granted they take a little bit of bonus damage, but still, they're... This is, this is going to be a disgusting... Uh, it's, it's frankly an army. Uh, he's a one-man army at this point if he gets off his phantasm as well as his Mantle Style. I mean, and that's the thing as well. If you look at what Alliance have got, if Secret lose a team fight, Alliance is pushing power with the Lena, with the Chaos Knight, with the Io tethering up, with the Bloodlust coming from Ogre. Secret, they'll lose a lot of structures very, very quickly if they don't bring down heroes like the Chaos Knight in the fight. So, uh, you know, Secret, they've got to come out on top, which looking at the last couple of fights, they just really haven't. Alliance have been dealing very nicely with the lineup and the loader Chaos Knight is definitely getting scarier and scarier at this point. And well, with 2k gold, uh, we're getting to the point at level 21. Maybe we'll see him sell his Midas and, and kind of finish off into his penultimate item before picking up those boots to travel. I mean, as this cast, what do you think he goes for as his next big pickup? Mm, so we're saying for, sorry, which hero? Uh, for the Chaos Knight. Uh, huh. That's a good question. He's got, like, this is basically your core's Chaos Knight. Uh, I, the best item for illusions probably at this point is Scotty for the stats. Uh, Butterfly isn't a terrible choice here. 
Uh, I'm not sure if there's really anything else. The the one thing that uh, the one item I think is very underrated on Chaos Knight actually is Refresher late game to okay. give you a new BKB to work with as well as to give you a another Phantasm. I, I believe when you refresh and use it, I think you lose your other illusions. I'm not sure about that, but even if you do, it's still a great item because Chaos Knight without Phantasm and without BKB is he's still strong. He's got Bloodlust, he's got Tether, Overcharge. Obviously, it's still a scary hero, but with the Refresher and the second Ultimate, that's where he gets incredibly terrifying. So I. Think I think most likely we see like a Scotty or a Butterfly as the next pickup, and then the the final item for Loda probably is that Refresher. Uh, at some point, if if there ever gets to a point where Secret has a really scary right clicker, maybe he trades out his armlet, goes for something like an Abyssal Blade, and and just uses the armlet as a, a, a seventh item that he puts on his hero before he pops Phantasm. But uh, we'll see. For, for now, I think most likely save for buyback number one, get Scotty slash Butterfly number two, and then if you have the if you have the gold for buyback as well, just pick up your refresher seventh item. But I, I mean, this, this is something that this is the dream scenario for a cast knight. You're up against the Queen of Pain Shadow Feed. You lost the lanes pretty hard after a really good start, and you're still out farming them. He's out farming. Well, not out CSing, but he's he's more he's more net worth than these other heroes, which is. Quite crazy to think about. Just look at how bad of a farmer CK is in general. Yeah, Lodi's done a great job of catching back up and really getting himself to the forefront of the game. There might be a fight about to kick off here. Alliance looking for a wrap round. Nikwa can he find initiation? He will on his side. Brings the Queen of Pain to fight. Laguna Blade gonna blow down the quads straight away. There's a Fisher coming in, but it's not going to be enough to stop the aggression of Alliance because Loda just wrecking the illusions. Look at them down onto Arteezy, Arteezy, even with the BKB, can't do a lot here, Loda brings Puppy back, Arteezy's gonna be able to find the blinker, TP3 out, Nikwa can't find the flame break, it's still on cooldown, only one person actually died so far on the side of Team Secret, Alliance, they're still alive, Pika pops the BKB, wants to find something here, it's S4 on the high ground, Nikwa chasing down Puppy and will find the Earthshaker, but still... Are they going to look for any more Alliance? They want to find S4. He's got the blink available and he will blink out. Indeed, and I don't think Alliance can chase this Pycat trying to boost his movement speed. Four staffed in by the Batrider. S4 with the Dukes, though. I think he's going to be able to get out of this one. Oh, no, no, there's the blink. Nikra and the Yules, they are going to find him. He hasn't got Primal Split, of course. It was already used in the previous fight. Laguna Blade blowing him down. And LD Alliance. They're finding these fights and they're not losing anything. Oh man, it's 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 starting to really get worrisome here for Seeker now. They they don't have buyback on any of these heroes. They don't have a Bruce split. They use their refresher Shadow Fiend, so he's got no ultimates, one BKB, and he's uh, basically a useless hero outside of the ultimates. The, the downside of this build is uh, he has no right click, and without the without the, the ultimate, he can't do anything. So they're gonna walk in. They may take the entire base. This. I don't know if it's GG, but it's getting to a point where Secret Warrior has to come back and come from there. They just can't kill Loda. Even with the double Requiem, he got them both off there. And Loda's illusion still survived through that. Now they'll find their lasso pick in the shadow of the fountain. They're trying to close out Secret here. Quapult will remove your wisp for now, but Zai up against it. Laguna comes through. They just need a crit or two. Yeah, on the floor, but nobody's concerned with that. Now they won our tour. They're going to chase forward. They'll get the kill. There's a buyback, but what does it matter? He's buying back with half his souls, only a single Requiem now, it's just come off cooldown. The getting mad is not even good enough, uh, and well, do they get him? For now, he's tanking up, he gets a multicast, the puppy is out of mana for a second, he will get the kill. Two lanes of Rex down, they just bought back on their precious Shadow Fiend, and it really feels like one more good push from Alliance, that could just end secret. I, I gotta say, this game is really showing the power of the Chaos Knight, and you know, the Batrider initiations have been great, but man, CK brings the pain. This hero is doing insane damage every fight, and in theory, Secret of a Draft that's pretty good at dealing with them. I wouldn't say it's exceptional, like, probably exceptional would be like a Phantom Assassin with Empower or Battle Fury to, to evade the illusion damage and to cleave them, but they have really good AoE, and, and you just go back to that one fight at their base. OD, where it looked like Secret could have calmly closed out the game. They end up giving up a team wipe. Don't even get the melee racks, and ever since then, it's it's been Alliance all the way. It really has. That one team fight really kind of set the precedent for the yes. rest of the game that we're seeing. Alliance coming out on top every time. Loader coming fairly, fairly boldly out, waltzing straight into the Roche pit. Secret on the high ground. Loda, is he going to get caught out here? This would be a nice position. If Secret can get the jump onto Loda, maybe they can dispatch him quickly, but 
I don't know. He's just 4,000 health. 4,000 HP. 20 armor. He's and the backup of an IO. It's not something that you really want to jump into first because you're just not going to be able to kill. The rest of the team are going to come in by the time you've only got to have half health. Answer by the kill. Nice picture from Puppy and the blinking in the echo sound. Is it enough for his son? Trying to get it out of the market with a tenor from AK. Keeping him alive. No one's dead yet on the side of Alliance. Alliance getting fairly low. Our teacher coming in with a nice spread through the souls. But he gets brought back by Loda and slapped down with the crits. Alliance, they do lose the Ogre and the Iron. And maybe even Loda. Can they find Loda? There's going to be a Batrider jumping into the clock. And the King's coming out. He wants the Chaos Knight to help him. But Chaos Knight, he's got his own issues. And he is going to fall fairly quickly. The punches of us for Puppy and Kuro. And they're going to find the Bat as well. Oh, but the secret. creeps are marching in. The creeps are pushing him mid and bottom. They've got no racks in either lane. Secret, if they go for this Roche, even if they get it, the, these creeps are going to do a lot of damage. It seems like they're going to try to have the best of both worlds. They leave three in the pit. Kuroki perhaps ready to back off. He holds the gem for now. An alliance. Want to force the issue. Loda comes in. He doesn't have Phantasm, though. Keep that in mind. BKB is available. He's got the Mance as well. The Drunken Haze use. Roche dropping low. And here we go. Nikla into the pit for now. Doesn't have a last one. He's just trying to stall here. A secret are very slow at this motion, though. Hardly any right click towards the Loda. There's your Manta. Pulls it, Puppy. Doesn't finish the job, though. The Roche hits the deck. The Brewmaster best for granted. They also get the Roche last hit. Now Pycat dead. And it's just Loda left alive. For okay, rotating in, though. He, for now, Loda pushed up onto the high ground here. This is an awful position. Can he get back down and make something happen? Uh, yeah, there's your reality ref. Jumps back down, has no wisp though. And can they even kill Loda? He's missing like every attack it feels between the evasion, the drunken haze, S4. Able to get the job done, wins the man fight. The creeps were doing some damage here. They lost a tier four. That's a dieback though in your chaos knight and another death for the wisp. A lot of buybacks used in general. It looks like one, two, three, four buybacks in total used in that fight. Puppy. Gonna use his to try and turtle. Big swings there for secret, but the one thing is they don't get objectives. This may be the point OD where Alliance starts thinking about the rat. We we may see them, you know, relocate top, deploy the, the Phantasm Manta Illusions and, and go for racks. But for now, Secret looking for objectives. 80 seconds on the sidelines for the cat site. Yeah, this is the biggest window that Secret have had for the last uh, 20 minutes of the game for Secret to get some objectives done and they're certainly going to find it top lane. They do clear out the rats. Are they trying to find anything more? They might be able to. It's a bit of a bold attempt. Only S4 and Zai are here. Machka could come in and try and blow up the Brew and Brew. It's just going to intentionally put the Aegis so that's going to be an opportunity for Machka to come in with the multicast. Oh my goodness. Goodbye Zai. There's your buyback for the Queen of Pain. Wants to get straight Has back the BOCs. The yes, gets I think they, uh, do they have this? Base. No Chaos Knight for 40 seconds. This is going to take some really good kiting and crowd control here from Alliance. I, I, they need some RNG here from the from the Ogre, it seems. The tower's dropping low. Secret trying to just end this game. Close Alliance out. In comes Nikwa to start. He gets off the lasso on Arteezy, but now a stolen lasso from Kuro and Zai leaps forward. On the podcast, forcing him back. There's Requiem. Number one, they don't have a second, it's still pulling down, and it seems secret. They have stolen this game from Alliance, it looked like it was all theirs. Long live Alliance, no longer, they'll pound the throne. Your stolen last one from Kurogi, just taunting them. What a turn of events. What a turn of a turn of a turn of events. Alliance, it looked like they'd come back into it. The Chaos Knight was proving to be a real issue and secret. At the end of the day, they realized that. They were very fortunate that Loda bought back into that Roshan fight and then they were able to take it take it uh, positively. Now, I've got to say hats off to Zai's play. Even in that Roche fight, uh, he was able to steal the cheese as well, which meant he was able to sustain